Hey, hey, welcome to this channel with Dawn Nicole, Ace in Your Agile Career. Today, we're gonna break down the roles of an Agile team. What are all these roles? And we're gonna do it in a way that's simple, and we're gonna aim to do it in about five minutes. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Hello, hello. Welcome to Acing Your Agile Career from Beginning to Winning. This is the channel where we talk about everything Acing Agile. If this is your first time here, then welcome. We're super glad to have you. If you are a returning member of the channel, then listen, welcome back. Super glad to have you. So listen, we're going to break down today the roles of an Agile team in a very meaningful way. We're going to do it simply and we're going to try to do it in about five minutes. So to kickstart this, let's first of all level set on what the core roles are on an Agile team. On an Agile team, we have a Scrum Master, we have a product owner, and we have developers, the members of the team who do the developing, who are helping to deliver the product. And today we're going to break these three roles down, but we're also going to break down outside of the core team, what the coach is doing, what is that Agile coach over there doing, what the stakeholders, stakeholders are doing, and perhaps the Agile leaders outside of the team. So let's jump in. I've got, um, this is no small feat to try to make this simple. Number one, a scrum master. So a lot of people like to use the word servant leader when it comes to scrum master. And what this means is this is a person who is serving the team, leading from a place of strength. But what does the scrum master actually do? So the whole time the scrum master has a couple of hats that they are wearing, right? He or she is number one, helping the team to just stay organized as they work in Agile, staying organized on the Agile ceremonies, the agile meetings, making sure the cadences are consistent and also time box. So organizing in that way, making sure that the work is organized, making sure that the team is doing its best to embrace the agile principles and values at a team level. Um, they are also helping to remove impediments. So their entire focus as the teams work in these two week or three week or one week or four week sprints, whatever cycle you're on, the Scrum Master is really copiously focusing on making sure that there's nothing in the way of getting the work done. So they are checking in, they are being proactive, they are asking questions, they are saying, listen, you work, do I need to go and do something? Do I need to go follow up, right? So when you think about the Scrum Master role, think about it from those kind of three facets, right? Keeping the team organized on schedule and time boxed, making sure that impediments are removed and really making sure that the team is honoring and embracing the Agile principles. This is that, let's move on to the product owner, speaking of product owner. so. The product owner has a very unique role. I've always described it as they kind of, they belong to the Agile team, but they also strongly represent the voice of the customer and the wants and desires of the stakeholder. So the product owner, I like to say, sits at the front of the ship, so to speak, and takes the, you know, intakes the work, right? Intakes it, vets it at a very high level, makes sure that they understand it because that product owner is gonna really be the person that goes back and communicates it with the team, um, breaks it down to the team, articulates it on the behalf of the stakeholder um, and, and customers, right? And so it would really behoove the product owner to make sure that they have a starting understanding. Notice I use the word starting, a starting and ideally clear understanding. But even if the product owner has a starting understanding, the team can start to frame the work, clarify the work, refine the work, prioritize the work. And then if additional questions are needed in order to move that work forward, the product owner is the, the mouthpiece, the, the communicator the liaison, if you will, on the behalf of the team. Um, the product owner um, interacts frequently with stakeholders, interacts frequently with uh, customers in, in that case, and usually speaks to this, the progress of level. Now let's talk about the developers. There used to be a time when developers was really in the truest sense, like developers, coders, engineers, QA. But now that we are sort of in a modern world, there are lots of teams who are not technology teams teams that are working in Agile. So now a developer can be anyone who's responsible for delivering the work in a sprint cycle, right? Delivering the work, putting their hands on it, doing the doing. So if I, if one of the things I had to develop in this sprint was a survey to a bunch of attendees for a huge October event, then I would be developing a survey and it might not take me deep technical skills to get that done, but it's still one of the tasks assigned to me. I think you get the drift. So the developers are on the team are the people with the right skill sets to help deliver the work at hand, right? 
and the right skill sets will really be determined by the product, uh, the type of work we are tracking, we are building, we are supporting, right? And so this could change and look different from team to team. But at a high level, the developers, like I said, will consist of the person doing the doing and typically someone who is vetting the work at the end, some sort of QA function, someone who's doing a double check. And sometimes you see these roles work in tandem. They sort of switch hats because the thing about an agile team is that they should be self-organizing and cross-functional. Those are key words. All right, so I gave you the core functions right now of sort of how these teams, um, these roles work together. Let's talk about the stakeholder. So what is the stakeholder's role? The stakeholder has a role in making their needs known, um, preferably ahead of time, like what is needed by when, right? So understanding the features, understanding their market, what their customers want, and being able to bring that those requests forward in a meaningful way to that product owner. And nowadays, um, there are so many interaction models and opportunities for stakeholders to communicate with product owners and agile teams, such as, right, quarterly business reviews when the big room planning time comes, you know, the QBR, and we call it that, but you all may call it something different. This is a request of uh, what's coming for, for the forecasting ahead, what's the work, what are the resources that we'll need, what's the funding request that we'll need. So think of these big milestones as opportunities for the stakeholders to plug in and to sort of lift and shift and give all their requirements to a product owner and review it together. And this creates a future roadmap. Okay. In addition to this, when you get to day-to-day -day agile, there's also interaction models where the stakeholders may be brought in for the product backlog refinement session or question sometime. The stakeholders should certainly be invited to sprint reviews, right? To make sure that we're building the right thing the right way at the right time. Um, and so these are just some of the ways that stakeholders will interact. I have a whole section on stakeholder interaction models won't get into that here and then the beloved agile coach right where does the agile coach fit in so overall typically at a program level the agile coach is there to make sure that overall the program um, is going well is tracking well is maturing well and people are embracing um, the agile values and principles at a holistic level so while a scrum master is going to do this at a team's level and really work with their team the agile coach is leaning in to make sure that all of the teams all of the players involved from the stakeholders, the agile leaders outside of the core team, um, including the core team, everyone is working to embrace. Coaches do a lot of reminding, coaches do a lot of assessing, coaches do a lot of evaluating, coaches do a lot of leaning in, uh, coaches do a lot of reassuring, coaches are there to also give guidance. I like to describe the coach's role as both proactive, that means helping you ahead of time to understand what to expect, but also responsive. I don't use the word reactionary, but responsive, responding to change, responding to need. So this is sort of how an Agile team works together at a high level. I hope you got a ton of value out of this. If you did like this, share this, certainly uh, subscribe to our channel. It helps our algorithms. Also, uh, keep tuning in where you can get real advice from a real practitioner in her real office, you all. We hope you got a ton of value. And as always, right, keep it real and continue to ace your agile career from beginning to winning.